Welcome to the Norfolk Hotel. Welcome to Bournemouth at the end of one of our most glorious summers and for Alex's fantastic uh, art exhibition, It's Decided to Rain. So Alex, you were right, you did decide to have your art exhibition indoors, so please give him a round of applause for deciding to have this event. <laughs> now warmed up your hands. Uh, you probably you probably don't know who I am, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, for those of you who know who I am, uh, thank you for not leaving in disgust. Uh, but having been president of Bournemouth Chamber of Trade for five years, which is such an honour to put something back into a town that's been so good to me, and for my parents who came from other parts of the world, and I think you'll find with the success of our English language industry here, and just the people uh, who are here tonight, that uh, uh, everywhere, and especially Bournemouth, is a global village. Um, I think, because I'm a fan of history, um, the phrase, lest we not forget, is really important. Uh, but also it's important to find out about things that maybe you might have forgotten, or maybe didn't know in the first place. And I have to say, I've been amazed, humbled, and impressed not only realising that Alex is so incredibly talented outside of the hospitality industry and also his fashion sense, which is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> uh, believe me, I've got one of those suits on order. That's going to catch on. Um, but this guy, I like the guy. You know you do. He's a great guy. He's very special. He's got special heritage. But when he worked here, he was a great guy, he's a great guy for this hotel, but boy what a talent. Um, we've got some very good artists in the room this evening, some I know, some I don't, some I'm going to point to, some I'm not going to point to, other people know an awful lot about art but I'm not going to point to all of them. I think with art it's very much a question of whether you know about art or you're an artist, but you know what you like, you know what you don't like. And I have to say, as we've had this discussion, where you can walk into a room and somebody has put all this art around the room and you walk round and you walk out again. It makes no impression, it doesn't engage you. I've watched people, and I've done it myself, that people have walked up to stuff and thought, I want to know the story about this. Why did you do this? This is 3D. This is charcoal. How come this guy is working in so many mediums? What's the story? And we really want to know the story here, don't we? <laughs> so, very clever, Alex, I have to say. Um, it's been a real privilege uh, for me to try and get people of Bournemouth here because I know we have some very distinguished guests here from Chile. And I have to say, I think they all deserve a round of applause for coming so far to see us. Thank you so much. I think it's really important that Bournemouth makes a very special welcome to such an important story, such important people, and it's all about AI Amnesty International. I think that's enough for me, but I just wanted to mark the point that, unfortunately, our, our mayor, our premier citizen, was here at 5.30, uh, 5 o'clock, met Alex, saw the work, and is determined to come back, even though he has five appointments this evening. That's how impressed he was. So I wear this silly little thing, just basically, um, to say from Bournemouth, uh, Alex, thank you, um, I think I've warmed up the room enough, they're getting very bored with me. <laughs> they really want to hear your story, but I know that if you get so enamoured of the art that's in this room, Alex will put it in his car and will drive it to your house and explain the story behind it whilst you're writing the cheque. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest round of applause possible, please. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming today. I didn't expect such a massive crowd of people, um, such a variety of people here, good friends and family. Um, definitely, I would like to thank my entire family, um, my mum, my dad, my cousins, my uncles, and, um, and the little one, yes. <laughs> um, it's been a very tough task to try and get this exhibition up and running. Um, due to the fact as working before as a Deputy General Manager at the Norfolk Royal, I had all this art to produce in one year's time. 
um, from leaving the Norfolk Royal, I only left due to the circumstances of um, wanting to produce this art show. And I had to take a job at the Connell Hotel, which I work as night manager, to do the rest of the art that you see today. So as I said, all the art was done in the year schedule. I did a variety of work from charcoal to um, acrylics, oils, and to many different themes from romance <coughs> to um, horror to uh, gay art, etc, etc. That's just the media that I wanted to, because everyone has a different opinion on, on art itself. The, more, the other people I'd like to thank uh, is obviously the three wonderful gentlemen, which I'd like to come over here. exhibition is not really about Alexander Dacres, the exhibition is about my grandfather. His story is ten times better than any piece of artwork that is displayed today. The, what he went through, and the other two gentlemen, um, Alejandro Mieta, I hope I pronounced it Mieta, sorry, and Sergio Pena, I'm, I welcome you here today and I'm very privileged and honoured to have the three of you here today for this exhibition. These men were um, imprisoned under Augusto Pinochet for 30 years, were released by Amnesty International in three years' time. So I find that quite incredible that they are standing in front of us today to tell the story. And Mr. Mejita is already a, a, an author in Canada. <coughs> His work is fantastic as well. Okay. five political paintings, which I didn't want to reveal, everyone was harassing me and I was just saying, please leave me alone. <laughs> uh, the five political paintings are very um, sad because the events that happened in Chile were not very good at all. It's a totally different media um, that I'm using for it. Um, but before I reveal that, there's a few more thanks I have to make. Thank <laughs> 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 Andrea, I have to thank you as well. Um, Lenka, I don't know where Lenka's gone. Um, yep, yeah, hi. <laughs> um, Keith, who's turned down. Um, Magda, uh, in front of you. And my brother Hugh, as well, who's in the far end. <laughs> These guys have been inspirational for the work, um, with the finances and getting together. And they've all come from different angles to support the cause today as part of my team. So I thank every single one of you very much for that. I need to thank will be um, Justin, I don't know where Justin is around, and Dennis who helped me with all the, the giant boards that were brought into here which I actually nearly broke my back with. <laughs> and um, David with the van, I don't know where he is, but he helped me bring the actual equipment to this hall because all this was actually bought from a different hotel. So I thank you as well. Bournemouth Chamber of Commons as well, I'd like to um, thank them all. They have been absolutely brilliant with the cause. I'm not a member myself, but they've made me feel like a member, and yes, I am going to be joining you. Yes. <laughs> I know you're asking Just about... like tonight. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to thank as well for the advertisement in here, which was done by Fluke Felix Art Store, which is down the corner near La Tasca. They put a poster up. Bournemouth Tourism Office as well put a poster up um, advertising this. And also Shakita's restaurant with Monica. I don't know where Monica is. She's got a fantastic restaurant. I usually eat there all the time. <laughs> and of course, Ruben, who did a fantastic work on the last second music of Chile to try and get the theme involved that we have today. Okay? Obviously, the last one I'd like to thank would be Nigel Hedges himself. He has been absolutely brilliant. Um, a good friend of mine, actually, now constantly to chatting all the time. But thank you very much, Nigel, for getting me the right people involved in here. I do appreciate that. Well. Okay. Okay, so now the political art. Maybe you, you want to come out here. <laughs> come out here so you can see it. Okay, so they, they are very uh, dramatic things, you can look at them. I don't really think anyone's going to probably buy this kind of art, it's not something you buy. 
the most hardest art that I found to do in the whole hall was the political art, fortunately, but I needed to get a theme that we could all socialise with, with Amnesty International. I would also like to say that all the work on today before I release this is all auctioned, which Andrea, Keith, Hugh and uh, Linka are, are going to um, be around for the sales people. If you're looking to um, get any work, 100% will go to Amnesty International because I feel that we owe them something back, especially when they give the release of these gentlemen. So I will, I will really want to give it back to them. Okay. painting in here was the time of um, Salvador Allende. Salvador Allende was the uh, uh, Prime Minister of Chile who was unfortunately assassinated due to the, what happened in the events of a very nasty man called Augusto Pinochet. This man was a very powerful person of Chile and my, my grandfather and these gentlemen all worked very closely with the man. words that he have said, which was Viva Chile, Viva El Porto, and Viva El Las Trabajos. That means um, live the people of Chile, um, the, the workers that we have, and um, trying to unite together. Those are his last final words before he sadly passed away. Okay. The next one <coughs> is uh, one was a very awkward one to me to do, but I wanted to get something involved for Amnesty International for what they did for my grandfather. So I did a picture along the themes of my grandfather back in jail unfortunately but how you are today and the crack down the wall which is it re represents Chile and Amnesty International bringing a hand on the calendar to release the man you're obviously looking back about um, how it was Political number three is, um, unfortunately, with what happened in Santiago, um, after, um, in the beginning, there was an aircraft that came into the parliament of, um, in Chile that bombed it. They were sent aircrafts by Augusto Pinochet, and that started the problem in Chile. I did the effect of the, the start and the after <coughs> morph, which is the mothers with the big banners that you see over there between Donde Esta, which means where are they? And the mother's very sad looking for the children, even looking today for the remains of their children. They never found them and they're still hunting today because it's 40 years today since this happened. And every time they have a candle about what happened uh, in that time and they're still looking for the remains to bury them in peace. is a very difficult one to release. Uh, it goes to the events of Augusto Pinochet. Uh, Augusto Pinochet was a very difficult topic because um, he helped a lot of British people during the Falklands War. However, he is responsible for the murder of thousands and thousands and thousands of innocent families. So my picture portrays him going to hell. My picture portrays him going to hell and the soldiers that, dis that destroyed an entire community and the little thread in the mouth is, is, if you look closely, it shows that he never broke his silence of where those people were. Okay. The final one, before you can enjoy another drink, <laughs> it's a very uh, one that I thought not just about the mothers. I know the events of mothers that they disappeared and for the three gentlemen. I did think about the children. I thought about my mother who had a conversation on the phone. Where's my mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mother was 17 years old. My uncle Leo was very young and the auntie when they were When they were young, children also suffered, lost their families. So this is a child's perspective in black and white 
about the events they saw in Chile. Also shows the football stadium, a national football stadium that was used as a concentration camp for assassinations. Okay, so that completes my speech. I hope I didn't bore you too much. I do thank you all for being here once again. Okay, this is a fi the final bit. I didn't ask at the, uh, I didn't say actually in my speech. I totally forgot due to the fact that I had so much work on my shoulder. This woman here has helped me an incredible much, a lot. Basha, without you, without you, I wouldn't have been able to pull the show off. So I really thanks to you, and I'm very sorry I forgot about you because I feel really bad about it. But I had a lot of time. I know. Thank you.